You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the gun! Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 29th of March 1999, the Monday after WrestleMania 15. This week Raw comes from East Rutherford, New Jersey, while Nitro takes place in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Loads to get through this week, but before we get stuck in, the Spring Stampede video was originally due to release on Christmas Eve this year. That video is going to get bumped to Tuesday the 26th of December in order to make way for a Christmas special on the 24th. I'll remind you guys about this again next week. So with that out of the way, let's check out Nitro's first 60 minutes and see what happened over on TNT. It's the end of an era guys, next week the Nitro set gets completely changed and yes it's absolutely depressing. WCW are giving away a Volkswagen Beetle while the commentators plug Beetle Adventure Racing on the N64. David Flair tells Tori Wilson he really wants a Nintendo 64 so he can play Beetle Adventure Racing and Tori says she'll buy him one if he cleans his room and eats all his dinner. The Toronto audience are chanting Bret Hart's name loudly as Mike Tanay teases a Hitman vs Goldberg confrontation tonight in the ring. But before we get to that, we have to check out the other classic matches WCW have planned for tonight like Vincent vs Conan. Vincent still thinks he's the leader of the NWO and this right here is what Conan thinks about that good man. Vincent applied two chin locks in this one so it wasn't all that bad, but a distraction from Stevie Ray would lead to Conan making his opponent tap out to the Tequila Sunrise. I really don't think Conan needed any help to be honest. Hollywood Hogan finds out from Tori Wilson that young David Flair looks up to the Hulkster like a father. For some strange reason, Tori also wants to know if Hogan really beat up Big Kevin Nash last year during their epic finger poke of doom encounter, and Hulk says yeah, he beat Nash up in the middle of the ring in one of the hardest fought matches of his life. He then whispers something into Tori's ear about Big Kev, so it looks like Tori's stirring the pot a little. This gets confirmed later on when Tori tells Nash what Hogan said, and Nash wonders if Tori even watched the finger poke of Doom match because clearly Hogan didn't beat up anybody. Could be a swerve, smells like a swerve, and whoopity fucking do, more internal fighting within the NWO, how original. Hogan comes out to cut a promo and the Toronto audience absolutely love the Hulkster. Toronto's always been good to Hogan ever since WrestleMania 6. Everything Hogan says gets a pop, the crowd hang on is every word, and Hogan's out here to challenge Ric Flair. Hogan says he beat Flair at Uncensored, so Hogan wants to know why the world championship isn't around his waist. Hogan says the NW Wolfpack and the black and white are surrounding the arena looking for Flair. Hollywood wants his rematch tonight on Nitro. The crowd continue to chant as Hogan goes through his usual NW4 live spiel. And it is interesting seeing Hollywood get such a good reaction during this era. I'm sure it made him feel pretty good. The title match is not confirmed, we'll hear from Flair in a moment, but we get some more big news when the commentators say Sting was spotted earlier on going through Toronto airport. Another superstar who's coming back to WCW is Diamond Dallas Page. Page says during a sit down interview with Mike Tanay that there's been some drama between himself and Kimberly, but Kim's doing fine and she's getting better. Page suffered a herniated L4 disc following his match against Scotty Steiner, but he too is feeling a lot better now. But Page seems to have developed a new attitude and he even stops Tanay from calling him the people's champion. Looks like we're going to deal with a heel Diamond Dallas Page once again. Page calls Mike stupid when asked about the 30 day clause. Remember, Scott Steiner said he would get Kimberly for 30 days if he beat Page, but Dallas says that stipulation was never agreed upon. Dallas is almost condescending when he explains he would never put his wife up for grabs in a wrestling match and Kim wouldn't agree to it either. And Dallas then says when he comes back he's gonna do things a bit differently. He won't be like a bullet in a china shop looking for Scott Steiner, he's gonna pick his spot and he's gonna do things his way.
Raw kicks off this week with a Steve Austin promo, on Nitro, Raph takes on Kenny Chaos. Let's get the Nitro match out of the way, there's no point going into details, Raph wins with a meltdown and that's it, nothing else to say. For those wondering, all 5 of you, Robbie Rage was released from WCW so Kenny Chaos no longer has his tag team partner, Rick Steiner no longer cares about young Kenny either, and Chaos is gonna get released too by the end of 99, I always thought high voltage were alright. Wish I had more to say here, but I don't, the company didn't know what to do with Wrath the moment he got popular so he's still stuck in WCW limbo. Over on Raw we've got something way more exciting, new WWF champion Stone Cold Steve Austin cutting a promo the night after Mania 15. Stone Cold says he did exactly what he said he was gonna do at WrestleMania when he checked himself into the Smackdown Hotel, he went straight to room 316 and he burnt the hotel to the ground, but Stone Cold woke up and he decided the WWF title isn't worth all this aggravation, the WWF championship belt is not worth all the trouble Stone Cold went through, and Austin's decided he's gonna roll Languish the belt tonight on Raw. That's right, Stone Cold Steve Austin is gonna give Vince McMahon the belt back. Vince comes out looking a bit surprised, but Stone Cold confirms that yes, he is giving up the belt and he's gonna do it right now in front of all these people. Vince gets in the ring, Steve hands over the belt, the crowd boos, and Vince says he always knew Austin would crack under the pressure. Austin stops McMahon from leaving the ring, he makes him watch a video on the Titantron, and look, it's Vince McMahon running away with Austin's smoke and skull belt last year at breakdown. Vince said he was gonna put the smoke and skull belt above his fireplace in one of his many homes, so it's obvious what Stone Cold's doing here, he's giving back the WWF belt, but he's not giving up his title of WWF champion. Austin confirms he's still the champ, he tells Vince to, and I quote, go down to Greenwich, Connecticut and get Austin's smoke and skull belt back. Vince confirms that he's got the belt and he's not gonna hand it over, there's nothing Austin can do about it either, saying as Vince needs to physically provoke Stone Cold if Austin wants to beat the chairman's ass, so Austin shows a little more footage on the Titantron, it's from WrestleMania 15, and it shows McMahon attacking Stone Cold during the main event. Physical provocation right there folks. Austin gives Vince 2 hours to get his belt back, if not Vince McMahon's dead. So Vince panics and he decides to hit Stone Cold with the WWF title before running back up the rampway and through the curtain. Stone Cold says Vince has just decided to do this the hard way, so by the end of Raw tonight Vince's ass will belong to Stone Cold Steve Austin. After a commercial break, we see Vince, Shane, The Stooges and Stephanie McMahon in the corporate dressing room. This isn't Stephanie's Raw debut by the way, but you'd already know that if you were paying attention to earlier episodes. Vince tells Steph to phone home and get someone to bring the smoking skull belt back to Raw, Shane's a little shocked that his dad's giving in to Stone Cold's demands, but Vince tells his son to shut it because the corporation are doing things Vince McMahon's way tonight. By the way, I want to say hi to my one little fan out there. Hello, Smokey, my cat. Sable and Jackie take on Tori and Ivory next on Raw. On Nitro, we've got a Ric Flair promo. Rick starts his promo off by saying he doesn't like being in Canada, the only reason he's here tonight is because World Championship Wrestling's a global company, so with that in mind, I do look forward to Nitro coming live from Zimbabwe later this year. Rick has a surprise tonight, he's brought someone to the arena even though these Canadian fans don't deserve it, and well well well, it's none other than Diamond Dallas Page, would have been a lot better if WCW didn't air that pre-tape promo just 10 minutes ago featuring Page, but there you go. Dallas says a lot has changed since he was last in WCW, we've got Ric Flair as champion and president of the company, and it must be pretty difficult for Flair to look at Paige as a big superstar right now, but Flair says he'll have no problems booking DDP like a chump just like he used to back in the early 90s. Flair knows why DDP's here, he wants a match against Scott Steiner, DDP confirms that yes he does want a match against Big Papa Scum, and then Paige randomly calls the fans in attendance a bunch of jackoffs, what's this guy's problem? 
Seeing as Hogan wants to fight Flair and Paige wants to fight Steiner, Rick decides to put DDP and Hogan against each other tonight on Nitro. The crowd pops as Hogan makes his way down to the ring, and while Hulk says to Flair that he will get his belt back, he also says he has unfinished business with DDP. If Hogan has to beat DDP to get the Flair, then so be it. And just as Hogan leaves the ring, Ric Flair announces that he's gonna stand in DDP's corner during this upcoming Nitro main event, something that Paige clearly doesn't want. We then look up to the rafters, and there he is, Sting's back in WCW. The crowd goes nuts and Ric Flair tells Sting to get down to the ring right now, but Sting just looks on as the crowd continue to lose their minds. Sting isn't wearing red and black anymore, he's gone back to his original vigilante face paint. And yeah, it is good to see Sting back. God knows this company needs all the help it can get right now and Sting can be a game changer if utilised correctly. Over on Raw, we've got old rivals Sable and Jackie teaming up to take on Ivory and Tori. The highlight of the match was this big swing right here from Ivory, but Ivory also ends up chasing after Terry Runnels, which in turn left Tori all by herself against Sable and Jackie. This would have been an easy victory for the heel team of course, but Sable decides to attack Jackie from behind with her championship belt. Tori then pins Jackie, and Tori won the match for her team. I've no idea what's going on here. Someone else who was a bit confused about this match ending was The Undertaker. So the dead man walks down to the ring to ask Sable what the hell was that all about. Seriously though, The Undertaker says he's here to see what Sable's got. Show me what you got. I want to see what you got. We're dealing with the horny taker tonight on Raw guys, and The Undertaker is not impressed with Sable's grinding, so he grabs her by the throat and he tells Vince McMahon to get out here and save his women's champion. It takes Vince a long time to show up, but he tells Shane and Stephanie to stay in the locker room. The Undertaker concludes that McMahon mustn't care about Sable all that much, but Vince does eventually arrive and he's looking a little concerned about what's happening in the ring right now. It then dawns on McMahon what's really going on here, he just left his kids unattended in the back and there's ministry members not currently in the ring right now. Vince rushes back to the locker room to check on his children, but Stephanie's gone. Shane left the room for a moment and it looks like Steph's been abducted. Vince stops Shane from phoning the cops. After what happened to the boss man last night, McMahon knows the police are useless against someone like The Undertaker, so Vince now has to form a search party to find his missing daughter. Scott Norton vs Rick Steiner takes place next on Nitro. On Raw we've got an X-Pac promo and a Tess vs Big Show match. I'm interested in seeing this Nitro match because these two almost killed each other a few times back in 95 and 96 with some botchy moves, so let's see if it happens again. Scott Norton doesn't budge after taking a shoulder block but he does budge when taking a Steiner line. Scott gets knocked out of the ring and Rick lets his opponent step back inside the ropes and the match resumes with Norton taking a few punches in the corner. An atomic drop and a throat thrust puts the dogface gremlin on the mat. Rick replies with a backdrop. Nitro then takes a commercial break, and there it is. It's kinda botchy, but it could have been way worse, I guess. Rick then pulls off a German suplex, but it seems they mess Rick up just as much as Big Flash Norton. So Scott goes for a power bomb, and yeah, it gets countered. Kinda regretting looking at this one now, move for move. Norton gets his head smacked off the ring post, Rick then pulls off his diving bulldog, Rick wins via pinfall, and the careers of both men continue on as if this match never happened. Backstage, Rey Mysterio wants Billy Kidman to be his tag team partner tonight. Kidman's like, nah, I'm gonna be a human advertisement tonight, bro. And besides, these two teamed up before and it didn't end too well. Rey's confident though that he and Kidman can become the new WCW tag team champions when they beat Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit tonight. Kidman eventually agrees, but do keep in mind that these two are scheduled to face each other at Spring Stampede. Over on Raw, X-Pac says it's been a year since he returned to WWF and he only came back to help out his friend Triple H and D-Generation X. Sean says it's been a hell of a ride, but last night everything changed. Triple H is no longer in DX, Hunter made his choice at WrestleMania, but Sean's making the choice tonight to keep DX alive. X-Pac and the New Age Outlaws are going to continue to raise hell, so D-Generation X aren't going anywhere. Tonight, Hunter will be hunted, X-Pac wants a match against his old friend. And I don't know guys, I think I would have saved this one on one match for the next pay per view if I'm honest. X-Pac's all fired up, he says, ahem, <clears throat> Triple H's ass is grass and Mr. Waltman's gonna smoke it. So stay tuned to see X-Pac smoke some ass cheeks later tonight on Raw. 
Backstage, Vince gets a call from the horny taker. He says Stephanie really is sugar, spice and everything nice. And this little statement makes McMahon throw the phone on the ground. Shane's all like, what happened? And Vince doesn't feel like talking about it right now. New WWF babyface The Big Show then met Test in the ring and the match ended in seconds. Test took a chop, a big boot and a choke slam, and just like that the corporation's bodyguard got completely squashed. I definitely would have chosen someone else to be The Big Show's sacrificial lamb on this evening but what do I know. Show says McMahon has some personal trauma to deal with right now but the big man doesn't care. Paul says no one owns the big show and he reminds everyone of what Vince said just before White made his debut. Vince said everything was going to change when the big show arrived in the WWF and so Paul promises to make Vince eat those words seeing as McMahon tried to embarrass the big show last night at WrestleMania. Back in the locker room Vince wants Ken Shamrock to help find Stephanie. Ken's pretty confident that he can locate the missing McMahon seeing as he's a former hide and seek world champion. He's a man who knows a thing or two about finding helpless young women. So Kenny Boy's gonna go hunting while Vince McMahon patiently waits in his locker room. Gentlemen Chris Adams vs Booker T on Monday Nitro, Steve Williams vs Bob Holly on Raw. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to sit here and take notes about this Nitro match because it's pointless. Booker T wins. We all know Booker wins and back then everyone watching on TNT knew Booker was going to win. I still went through the match to hopefully find something worth talking about but there's nothing here. The moment Booker T won that TV title again there should have been a storyline waiting for him. I know it sounds incredibly basic and that's because it is incredibly fucking basic. You've got Stevie Ray in a complete dog shit rivalry with Vincent right now. We we still haven't seen the Booker T vs Stevie Ray match. Go do that instead of pissing around because now it would be an ideal time for WCW and the guys running WCW to get their finger out of their asses. I mean their own individual asses. I don't think they have their fingers in each other's asses or maybe they do but you know what I mean. This boring filler nonsense has to stop and I say that as someone who found a new appreciation for Booker T through this series. Look what's going on over on Raw. I said last week that a Dr. Death vs Hardcore Holly match sounds a little interesting and just like that the two are meeting up in the ring. Just a little build up can do a lot of good because now I'll get to see if my preconceptions about this match are correct and hey the match might absolutely suck but at least I've got a reason to watch it. Holly delivers a hook clothesline but when going for a hip toss Williams looks at Bob like he's absolutely mental. Dr. Death pulls off a swift hip toss himself and check it out Jim Ross has joined the Spanish announce team and this is because he can't get his old job back. Dr. Death targets the knee of bombastic Bob, he uses the ring post before delivering a knee breaker and you know what this is probably the most timid hardcore match we've ever seen since the belt got introduced. That all changes however when Sparky Plug grabs himself a table from underneath the ring. He sets it up and he looks to finish the match but Williams scoops Bob up for the Oklahoma Stampede while also taking the referee out and we should now have a new hardcore champion. Al Snow then shows up and he whacks Steve with a frying pan. He says no one's gonna beat Holly for the hardcore belt but Al Snow and so Holly pulls Bob over Williams and Bob Holly wins the match. So let's get this straight, you were going to bring Steve Williams in as a main eventer, he gets his ass kicked by Bart Gunn in a legitimate shoot fight, he then returns and you've got another chance to build him up as a big threat and you have him job out the bombastic bob in a match where the outcome was predetermined, got it. I'm not saying Steve should have been main event in the moment he came back but I think a win over Bob Holly wouldn't have hurt either. Shane McMahon tells Vince that The Rock's up next and Vince says he doesn't give a damn about The Rock, strong words. Vince tells Shane to look over the next match because clearly the boss has way too much on his mind right now. Jerry Lynn with an F takes on Chris Jericho next on Nitro, on Raw we've got The Rock vs Billy Gunn. If Jerry Flynn wins this match it's over, reliving the wars cancelled and I'm going to cover karate tournaments every Thursday night instead. The Toronto audience love their boy Chris Jericho but Chris, ever the entertaining heel, says he's glad he moved to America because Canada sucks. Flynn pulls off his corner wheel kick that he totally stole from Savio Vega and Chris ends up showing the man without a mullet how it's meant to be done. As Jericho suplexes Flynn the crowd chant we want bread seeing as Chris just turned his back on his own countryman and look at this catapult coming, it's a catapult coming, nah Jericho can't be bothered jumping up. <laughs>
It gets even more bizarre when Jerry Gold can't be bothered hitting the ropes and he instead takes a short arm clothesline from the man they call Flynn. There's something up and I'm starting to think Chris might be getting a bit angry with his opponent here, something feels really off about this match. Chris performs a fisherman suplex followed by a lion salt, he's unable to lock in the lion tamer though and just when you think things can't get any worse, we see what could be the botchiest sunset flip ever caught on camera, even Sable and Ivory did a better job last week on Raw. If you still need confirmation that Jerry goes pissed off right here then here you go, Chris kicks Jerry right in the face, my my. The two then go right into the finish with Jerry goes scoring the pinfall win when using the ropes for leverage, and yeah, the drizzliest of shits right here, quite possibly Jericho's worst match ever on Monday Nitro, <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. Jericho is clearly upset about how this one turned out, something was definitely off way before the botch sunset flip, but there you have it, entertaining for all the wrong reasons. The Rock gets a babyface reaction when he walks down to the ring to face Billy Gunn on Raw. He lost the belt at WrestleMania but he seems more popular than ever right now. Shane joins the commentary table, he says he's worried about his sister and he wants to leave it at that, but I don't know man, he doesn't seem that worried when the match begins. Billy Gunn's on fire tonight with a few arm drag takeovers followed by a dropkick. We get a little miscommunication between the competitors but thankfully it doesn't end in one guy getting their head kicked in. We see the float over DDT from The Rock as the crowd goes nuts and someone else who went nuts right here was Shane McMahon. Michael Cole reminds Shane that his sister's been abducted and Shane tells Michael to leave him alone. A suplex from The Rock gets followed up with a stun gun. On the outside, Billy takes a bump at the guardrail before Rock goes on commentary. He asks Shane if he wants to see The Rock left the smack of Downeth, and this leads to BA Billy Gunn mooning the former WWF champion. This turns out to be a big mistake from Mr. Ass. Back in the ring, Billy walks straight into a rock bottom, and the corporate champ defeats Billy Gunn with a corporate elbow. Absolute domination here from The Rock. The crowd support for Rocky is absolutely undeniable, WrestleMania didn't hurt the great one a single bit and by the looks of things, Shane isn't hurting at all over the disappearance of his sister. Vince and Ken Shamrock are gonna switch up their game plan, Kenny Boy's got a match with Gangrel next, and Shamrock says he's gonna beat Gangrel up so bad that the funky vampire will have no choice but to reveal Stephanie's location. Shamrock vs Gangrel's our next match on Raw's War, on Nitro, thank god, Bret Hart cuts a promo. If you thought Rock got a great reaction over on Raw, it pales in comparison to Bret's entrance on Nitro. Toronto loves their Canadian hero and look at the smile on Bret's face, the dude loved coming home. We go back to 1997 when Bret says it's nice to be in a place where he gets a little respect. The hitman says he's been sitting in the back and everyone seems to be freaking out about television ratings right now, but Bret doesn't really care, he wants to recite Old Canada because Hart couldn't give two shits about TV ratings. Bret recites the Canadian national anthem as do the audience in attendance for Nitro tonight. From far and wide, Old Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Bret says he's a former 5 time WWF champion, he's been in WCW for a year, he's the excellence of execution, he's the best there is, the best there was and the best that there ever will be. Yet Bret can't get a match with anybody, Flair's hiding from the hitman, Hollywood's afraid of heart, the hitman knows he can excellently execute anybody in the locker room anytime he wants to but no one seems too eager to step inside the ropes. So Brett calls out Willie Goldberg, he calls him a big chicken. Brett says he's not going anywhere until Goldberg fights him tonight on Nitro. Brett says he was a bit shocked when Goldberg wanted to put up real money to fight Steve Austin when the hitman beat Stone Cold every time the two stepped into the ring together. Not a very accurate statement from Brett right there, but it is true that Goldberg challenged Austin on the Tonight Show. He says he'd put up 100 grand of his own money, but the fight, of course, didn't happen. Brett then takes off his Calgary Hitman jersey to show a Toronto's Maple Leafs jersey underneath. Brett says this is hockey country, so Bill needs to put away his silly little helmet and come out for a fight. Goldberg did indeed put away his little silly purple helmet and here he is, Billy Boy's coming out to kick Brett Hart's ass in Canada. Bill gets in the ring, Brett says come at me bro, Goldberg duly obliges and damn it Brett gets speared. Goldberg stays laid out on the mat following the spear and it looks like something may have gone wrong. Goldberg's out cold and the crowd aren't sure what to make of this. The commentators begin to wonder if Goldberg landed on his head as Brett begins to wake up. 
The hitman then covers Goldberg and he counts to three, and we see how this master plan was pulled off when Brett removes his Maple Leafs jersey. The hitman was wearing a metal plate around his stomach. Brilliant stuff here from Brett and one of the best moments from Brett's entire WCW run. The hitman then grabs a microphone and he talks directly to Eric Bischoff. His excellency says, I quit before throwing the mic down, so goodbye Brett Hart I guess. Brett argues with JJ Dillon on the rampway, the crowd are still going crazy for Brett and Nitro moves on to its next match. Great stuff here from Monday Nitro, really enjoyed watching this again. On Raw, Shamrock wasn't counting on Gangrel actually fighting back and he gets a shock when the Vamp pulled off this power slam right here. Gangrel follows up with the DDT as Ken's rescue mission almost comes to an end, but a few kicks followed by a few knee strikes bring Shamrock back into it. Gangrel won't tell Shamrock where Stephanie is, that's some highly confidential information good sir. So Ken beats the ever loving shit out of his opponent on the outside and hopes that Gangrel changes his mind. Gangrel gets annihilated here, Shamrock's utilizing every skill he learned in the dojo for this one. He gets in the ring and he asks Gangrel again where Stephanie is but Gangrel won't snitch. So that leaves Kenny Boy with no choice. Gangrel takes a belly to belly, the world's most dangerous man then applies the ankle lock and Ken asks one more time where little Miss McMahon is. Gangrel tops out, he still refuses to reveal any information, and things look pretty grim for Ken when the lights go out to signal a brood bloodbath. The plan backfires though as Ken grabs Christian in an ankle lock while covered in Gangrel's stinking red liquid, and Christian tells Shamrock almost immediately that Stephanie's in the basement. Why on earth Ken didn't check the basement earlier on is beyond me, but Ken now has a location and he's off to rescue the damsel in distress. Super Mario didn't have this much trouble when rescuing Princess Peach. Shamrock goes down to the basement or to the boiler room as the case may be, but we'll come back to this in just a moment. Oh yeah, the return of Norman Smiley. Norman takes on Buff Bagwell next on Nitro while Road Dog defends his IC title against Goldust. Buff gets in the ring and he says he's done with Big Papa Pump. That relationship is over. Bagwell has no NWO logos on his ring gear. He also came out the brand new theme music. So that's it, Buff Daddy is now on his own and he's getting a good crowd reaction too. He's still as cocky as ever though as evidenced by his arm drag and hip toss at the opening bell. It looks like Norman may have an uphill battle here tonight but if there's one thing we know about Norman Smiley it's that he's tenacious. He's tenacious and he's a mean son of a bitch. To prove how mean he is he knocks Buff out of the ring and he teases a big wiggle. It's just downright cruel when he teases the wiggle but doesn't actually do it. So Buff replies with a backdrop followed by a big drop kick and this time it's Norman getting sent to the outside. After a bit of time wasting, the match resumes with Buff dodging a monkey flip and Norman gets kicked in the head. Smiley then takes an inverted atomic drop followed by a body slam, but Norman gets the knees up when Buff tries a splash. Buff realizes he's in the ring with a real wrestler when he takes the Smiley slam and Norman follows this up with some shuffle action. Buff then takes a vertical suplex and look at this, Buff may have the stuff but Smiley's got the uh, uh Smiley's got the stuff too. Norman's also got some serious chin lock skills as Bagwell finds finds out first hand, but somehow that madman buff daddy breaks free and he gets an opening when Norman misses a dropkick. Bagwell gets a boot up in the corner, we see the blockbuster and the new babyface buff Bagwell wins on Monday Nitro. It's gonna be interesting seeing where this one goes, buff's a unique character and he can be very entertaining in the ring and on the microphone, but he's also a character that people love to hate. A decent match on Nitro right here though, no complaints. Over on Raw, Road Dog goes through his usual routine and it's a bit odd that neither Road Dog nor Billy Gunn made any mention of Triple H before their matches. I mean, it's a pretty big deal but it's only X-Pac who seems to be taking it personally. Goldust makes his way down to the ring with the blue Meanie and when the bell rings it doesn't take long for Ryan Shamrock to walk down to the ring. Meanie tells Ryan to hit the bricks and it looks like Goldust also wants Ryan to leave. She did screw up at WrestleMania after all. Road Dog hits Goldust with a pretty hard chop and Goldust replies with a to the face. Goldust then goes for Shattered Dreams but Road Dog blocks it by pulling Mike Kyoto in front of him. Meanie then tries to get involved but Road Dog takes him out. Road Dog sends the blue guy flying into the bizarre one and I liked how Meanie actually jumped into Goldust like he was trying an offensive move. 
Mini then gets bulldogged right in Goldust's golden nuts, and there's the dancey punch and dancey knee. On the outside, we see Mini holding the IC title, and after dodging a curtain call, Road Dog ends up getting smacked with his own championship belt. Goldust is then able to perform his finishing move, and just like that, we have a new Intercontinental Champion on Raw. This makes the decision to give Road Dog the IC belt in the first place even more confusing, but nonetheless, Goldust is now a three time Intercontinental Champion. Dustin grabs a microphone after the bell, he says the IC belt has come home, and Goldust now understands who he is. He also says the fans are gonna know who Goldust really is very soon, and fans will never forget the name of Goldust. Honestly, at this point, it's hard to care for another evolution of the Goldust character. This guy's flipped from heel to babyface four times in the space of roughly three years. Goldust started off well, it was then watered down, the artist gimmick made things super weird, Goldust was then completely ditched and resurrected for no reason at all. I just don't know what can be done at this point to make the character interesting again. Kenny Boy Shamrock has found Stephanie McMahon. What a guy, what a hero. Stephanie looks like how I looked when Alex Wright left WCW and I can feel her pain right about now. But the main thing is, Stephanie's okay and Ken Shamrock deserves a raise. Vince thanks Ken for saving his daughter's life, but he doesn't get any kind of financial bonus or financial compensation. That Vince McMahon guy's one cheap bastard. Tag team action next, Kidman and Mysterio vs Malenko and Benoit on Nitro, on Raw the Road Warriors take on Double J and Owen Hart. I admit I haven't been the biggest fan of the Benoit and Malenko tag team, but this match definitely has potential. Benoit shows no mercy at the opening bell with a back body drop, a backbreaker and a few hard knife edge chops to Billy Kidman, but Billy replies with an early BK bomb before tagging in Mysterio. Ray's going through his dungaree phase right about now. Ray has to contend with Dino Machino's sick mat wrestling skills before Benoit comes in to mess him up. The chops Benoit deliver here are really something else, but Ray comes back with a nice Hurricane Rana before Dean Malenko gets involved again. The champs show off their double team abilities and the crowd really like this spot, but Ray manages to tag out and in comes Billy Kidman all fired up. Billy takes out both his opponents and things were going really well for the challengers until Dean pulled off his metal rope gut buster. I always like this move, but you'd only see Dean pull it off against cruiserweights unfortunately. We come back from a commercial break to see Kidman getting suplexed, but Kidman's not out yet, he just needs the tag out. Kidman falls victim to a double flapjack and on the outside Billy gets punished at the guardrail by Stenko Malenko. The horsemen go for another double flapjack but this time Kidman counters with a dropkick and here comes Rey Mysterio with the final hot tag of the match. Ray takes out both horsemen before launching his own partner over the top rope and onto Chris Benoit. Dean then counters a top rope attack and he locks in a cloverleaf, but Raven and Saturn show up to interfere in this match. Dean takes an even flow DDT when the ref's got his back turned, Ray covers Dean and we've got new tag team champions on WCW Nitro. A very short run for Benoit and Malenko then. As mentioned earlier, Ray and Kidman are scheduled to face each other at Spring Stampede, so it's an odd but interesting booking decision here where the tag team titles are concerned. Easily Benoit and Malenko's best tag team match to date though, no doubt about it. Over on Raw, this is the Legion of Doom's final match of the Monday Night War and watching it back made me reflect on how poorly they were treated after coming back in 1997. I really do think this run hurt the legacy of the Road Warriors, which is kinda weird seeing as they seem like a fit for the WWF's Attitude Era. The damage had been done though, the LOD were gonna head back to Japan, but on their way out they were gonna put Owen and Jeff over. Hawk and Animal pulled off one final doomsday device and they had the titles won, but the ref was too busy dealing with Paul Ellering and Deborah on the outside. A guitar shot sends the Road Warriors packing from the WWF, the tag champs retain their belts, and yeah, the best thing I can say here is avoid the whole LOD run from 1997 to 1999. If you want to see the Road Warriors at their peak, you really need to go back to the 80s and very early 90s. Some dweeb from Connecticut has delivered Stone Cold's belt, he delivers the championship to Vince McMahon while Vince shows gratitude to Ken Shamrock, and Mr McMahon says he doesn't care about the title anymore. Vince says he's bringing Stephanie home and he wants Shane to give the belt to Austin. This night is over for McMahon and he can't deal with any more nonsense, so Stone Cold can have his belt back. 
Vince and Stephanie leave the room and Shane decides to defy his father. He tells Shamrock the night is not over yet and seeing as Kenny's the 1993 hide and seek world champion, Shane orders Ken to go find the rock. Raw ends with Triple H vs X-Pac this week while over on Nitro it's Diamond Dallas Page vs Hollywood Hogan. So DDP's the heel here and Hogan's the babyface? <laughs> Have I got that right? <laughs> I get the feeling that Hogan wanted to turn babyface and this means other top babyfaces in the company had to turn heel just to make some room for the Hulkster, it definitely feels that way. Flair's in DDP's corner for this one and DDP takes nothing but clotheslines before the first commercial break. I can't remember the last time Hogan got a crowd reaction like this since beginning reliving the war but they absolutely love Hollywood in Toronto. Paige is bumping all over the ring for Hollywood and when we come back from commercial break Dallas is taking more bumps at the announce desk. Dallas turns it around for just a moment but Hollywood overpowers DDP. This leads to the letters at the entranceway falling off the stage and hey it's not like WCW is gonna need them after this week. Hogan stays in control around the ringside area and back in the ring DDP gets whipped and choked out with Hollywood's weight belt. The crowd boos when Hulk gets a taste of his own medicine and they boo again when Ric Flair gets involved on the outside, but DDP then attacks Slick Rick and the commentators have no idea what's going on. Back in the ring Hogan takes a discus clothesline followed by a swinging neckbreaker. Flair once again tries to attack Hogan and Paige says he doesn't want the world champion's help. Charles Robinson comes down to officiate the match just as Hogan misses the leg drop, but Wood from the Hood isn't done yet as he starts hulking up on Diamond Dallas Page. Ric Flair decides to grab a steel chair and head into the ring. The nature boy lines up his shot and fuck me that could have been better eh? Robinson allows Flair to attack Hogan but it really doesn't matter. Hogan hulks up once again and he takes out the world champ. He then hits DDP with the big leg drop and when Robinson refuses to count, Hulk takes him out too. Mickey J then wakes up, Hogan gets the pinfall victory and no, there's no sign of Sting again before Nitro fades to black. Not a bad main event at all but the crowd definitely made it way better. Had this happened anywhere but Toronto it wouldn't have been nearly as good. While WCW gave us a clear winner this week in the main event, the WWF decided to not be so gracious. X-Pac and Triple H main event this week's episode of Raw but we've got an undecisive finish. Shane McMahon and China watch on as X-Pac gets destroyed at the opening bell and things go from bad to worse when X-Pac tries a standing bronco buster. One day he will hit that move and it's gonna look super super awkward. Hunter lays in the punches before rocking Waltman's head off the top turnbuckle. I'm just thinking here it would have been a lot better if Triple H cut a promo tonight to explain why he left DX but anyway. Puck gets wiped out with a facebreaker knee smash but he manages to dodge a corner attack. Hunter then takes a spinning heel kick followed by a jumping clothesline and Triple H then falls in place for a real bronco buster. Shane McMahon gets involved and X-Pac chases the boy wonder around the ring. When the two get back inside the ropes, China hits Kid with a clothesline and that's going to be a DQ finish. The corporation then attack Waltman as the crowd chant HBK. Pac takes a low blow, he gets pedigreed, but the lights then go out and here comes the big red machine. Unfortunately for Kane, the numbers are just too much here. He does get the upper hand when going after Triple H but he gets distracted by China and this leads to Hunter hitting Kane with a chair shot. Kane doesn't stay down for too long but he stays down long enough for China and Triple H to escape the ring. Kane chases after the former degenerates as Shane McMahon gets in the ring with a microphone and Shane tells Steve Austin that if he wants his precious smoking skull belt then it isn't that hard to find. It's currently around the waist of the corporate champ. Rock walks down to the ring holding Stone Cold's belt. He says the entire world watched them lay the smackdown on Stone Cold last night and while Rock admits he didn't get the job done in the Mania main event, it still took two Stone Cold stunners to put the great one down. The glass shatters and Austin comes down to reclaim his property. And here we go, WrestleMania continues with Rock and Austin beating the hell out of each other. The two fight at the commentary table before heading back into the ring. A Stone Cold stunner to Shane distracts Austin long enough for Rock to take control and look, here comes the corporation's Triple H to help out followed by Shamrock and Test. Austin gets his ass kicked as China brings Shane back up the ramp. It's looking pretty bleak for Austin right now but here comes the Big Show to lend Stone Cold a helping hand. Rock escapes the ring with Austin's belt, Big Show and Austin clean out the ring and Rock goes off the air with Triple H taking a big old choke slam from Paul White. The bad news is Stone Cold didn't get his belt back. The good news is this means the Austin vs Rock rivalry is going to continue into the next pay per view.
I struggled to pick a winner this week. The Bret Hart promo on Nitro was excellent. I was expecting Hogan vs DDP to be awful, but it turned out decent. Even Buff Bagwell vs Norman Smiley was good. Raw had some good storyline developments, particularly surrounding The Undertaker and Vince McMahon, but Triple H vs X-Pac was a letdown and I only really enjoyed the Billy Gunn vs Rock match this week. The more I think about it, the more I'm leaning towards Nitro, so I'm giving the point to WCW this week. Both shows were okay, but we have definitely seen better in the past. Raw's now on 90 points, Nitro's on 70 points, and we've got 19 ties on the board. Nitro got demolished in the TV ratings as expected last week. Raw got a 6.5, while Nitro scored a 3.5. A shame too, because Nitro wasn't bad this week at all. Next week on Nitro, oh, the absolute state of it. It's a new era in WCW as the company gets totally rebranded, but fear not ladies and gents, we have got Ming vs Scotty Steiner one on one, totally makes up for it. On Raw, Vince and Stephanie are forced to watch an Undertaker sacrifice while Shane McMahon takes care of serious corporation business, and we also see an unlikely new tag team when X-Pac and Kane join forces. Thanks for watching Reliving the War everyone, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and please take care.